If you haven't already, and maybe even if you have, take this moment to check your PF. Where are you on that 0 to 10 scale? Where were you yesterday? What do these numbers tell you about what you need? In this session, we consider internalized racism, imposter syndrome, and the risk to your psychological fortitude. But first, what is internalized racism? Racism-related mess starts outside of us, but the problem for PF emerges when you let the outside inside. Living in a world where Black people are devalued can understandably affect how you see yourself. Everything from mistreatment from medical doctors to police violence to routinely being passed over for raises or being told you're not a team player can impact your psychological fortitude in part because you begin to question your own value and your own self-worth. You internalize others' racist beliefs about people who look like you. You may even start to feel like an imposter who doesn't deserve to be there. So rather than tapping into whatever unique expertise or impressive quality that got you in the door, you try to make yourself a cookie cutter of others or tell yourself you don't deserve to be there, putting yourself at risk for heightened anxiety and depression. Are you familiar with CEO Sint Marshall? If you haven't heard of her, you may be familiar with the organization that she is CEO of, the NBA Dallas Mavericks organization. Sint Marshall was the first Black woman NBA CEO. She'd already retired from a longtime executive career at AT&T when she was recruited for the CEO position. She shared in an interview that over the course of her career, she'd been advised on everything from how she wore her hair to avoiding wearing less bright ethnic colors at work, to even calling herself Cindy rather than Scent. Some of this may sound familiar to you even in more contemporary times. Because there were so few who looked like Ms. Marshall in these settings, she had to be strategic about the decisions that she made. At times, she resisted the recommendations. She was confident in who she was. Now. She's in a place to shift the cultural space in an influential organization. She couldn't do that if she wasn't dialed in to her own authenticity. This is what you will have to do. Assess the environment and always, always be clear about who you are and what you bring to the table. There is no way you can do your job accessing your own creativity when you can't even be you when there is messaging that the real you isn't valued. I'll never forget a white student who said to me that he didn't see the big deal with black people having to switch up how we present ourselves. He used the example of how he talked differently with his grandmother than he did with his friends. I pointed out to him that his presentation with his grandmother didn't affect his livelihood, his capacity to get a promotion and pay real life bills. His grandmother might side-eye him for talking to her the way he talked to his friends, if it was even that different. But he wouldn't miss any meals, and Grandma definitely wouldn't cut him off. I'm also certain that student didn't question his worth as a grandson. How you present at work has real-life consequences. And between me and you, even if you were promoted because there was seemingly no one else to promote or because they had to put someone in there? Well, first of all, stop telling yourself that. If you were unqualified, no one would put you in any advanced position. Be assured that you deserve to be there. And if, for some reason, you did magically sneak through, consider this. You are holding space for some other African-American person who deserved to be there, but was overlooked for some reason or another. You are representing for them. You broke through a ceiling that, for whatever reason, they couldn't get through. Maybe they didn't graduate from the right school, or maybe their name sounded too ethnic, but yours was acceptable. 
none of that matters because guess what? You don't have time to distract yourself with foolishness, carrying the weight of insecurity. Instead, you have to get to work. Maybe think of all the times you were passed over. This is your time. While you're handling business, resist working twice as hard. Work smart. You can burn yourself all the way out trying to prove that you deserve to be there. Remember, you are taxed enough with the burden of working twice as hard to get half as far dealing with subtle racism and systemic discrimination. Depending on your place of employment, that's a part-time job itself. You can do excellent work without doing extra work. The consequence of overburdening yourself is overwhelm, anxiety, fatigue, sleep problems, and more. You may be able to go all in on some tasks or occasional projects, but it's not sustainable. Instead, set boundaries for yourself by considering your values and make sure that you're making decisions, taking on projects, meeting deadlines, and engaging with coworkers in a way that is true and authentic for you. Also, make a list of what you tell yourself when things don't go your way. Life happens. Disturbing and disappointing situations happen. What's most important is what you tell yourself and how you respond as a result. Consider your intention from this session. Reflect on what you gained. Reflect on what it is that you want to turn your energy toward as it relates to improving your PF at work. What perspective or behavior would you like to move toward after this session, after this program? As always, Knowing your intention will keep you on track to sustaining your psychological fortitude. It's been my great honor to share support with you and the people who care for you. Thank you for being here. Ashe.